first case. So provided to me is the frontal chest radiograph of a skeletally mature patient, and I can see uh, the main findings. Uh, main finding as uh, uh, lucency around the uh, heart, uh, which is limited by the membrane. So this is suggestive of uh, pneumopericardium. Uh, there is uh, homogeneous opacity also noted in the uh, left uh, mid and lower lung zone with uh, ob partial obscuration of hemidiaphragm and CP angle, most likely to be because of pleural effusion. Where, where could you please point it out to us? You have the control. Yeah, so this area. Uh, I think you'll have to click and then you have to click okay. once. Yes, now we have. Okay, this area. Got it. And where is the pneumopericardium? This is that you among the pericardium. Okay. And it is extending uh, near the apex, but uh, near the uh, superior mediastinum, but it is not extending beyond that. So it is not a pneumomediastinum, this is pneumopericardium. Okay. So uh, what do you want to do about it? So I'll uh, alert the referring phys physician for the same and uh, uh, I'll also inform the uh, card uh, cardiac team uh, regarding same and uh, I want to see uh, if any history pertaining to this uh, pneumopericardium is available and uh, if any prior imaging is available for the same. Okay, so when will you inform the referring clinician? Uh, immediately, urgently, sorry. Okay. I'll pick up the phone and urgently inform. So here is your next case and this patient, uh, uh, please don't use the mouse, I will yeah. give you the control. Okay, this patient had recurrent headaches. Now you can scroll and describe you. Okay, so provided to me is the uh, MRI brain of a patient. Uh, these are the flare sequence and I can see there are multiple areas of, I'll go through the scan first. There are multiple subcortical areas of uh, variable size flare hyperintensity seen in bilateral cerebral hemisphere, predominantly involving the frontal lobes. Uh, there are few areas also noted in the high frontal uh, slash high parietal lobe. Uh, coming down, uh, I can see another one in the region of uh, occipital lobe on the right side. Then uh, there are uh, there are two uh, lesions uh, which are um, iso to hyper uh, intense on flare sequence uh, seen in bilateral uh, uh, CP angle region. Uh, with suggestion of extension into the internal auditory canal with widening of the internal auditory foramen. Uh, in addition to that, uh, so uh, all these findings are pointing towards uh, uh, NF2 neurofibromatosis 2 with uh, multiple meningiomas, uh, bilateral acoustic schwannomas, and uh, I don't see the ependymoma of the component. Uh, in the in this brain scan, so I will inform the referring physician for the same. So, in your normal day-to-day -day reporting, yeah, as a colleague of yours, I agree that this is most likely schwannomas in the bilateral cerebellopontinangular regions. Would you be sure mm -hmm. about these other lesions on flare imaging? Uh, or would you like to do something regarding this before you complete the report? So I would like to confirm the findings uh, on uh, uh, post-contrast sequence. Which post-contrast sequence? Which? T1 uh, axial post-contrast. Okay, that's you want it. the axial ones, okay. Yeah. So I can see there is uh, uh, enhancing lesions seen in multiple places uh, along the FAX and uh, cerebral convexity with uh, thickening of dura and presence of dural tail sign as well. Uh, these are in favor of uh, multiple meningiomas and uh, lower down uh, in the CP angle region, the lesions show heterogeneous uh, peripheral, predominantly peripheral uh, post-contrast enhancement and enhancement is extending into the internal auditory canal as well. So these confirms the uh, my findings of uh, NF2. Uh, uh, I'll alert the uh, physician and uh, uh, we'll check with the uh, if the known history is uh, available. And uh, I'll inform there are there is no uh, urgency to alert in this case uh, as I don't see any uh, herniation or hydrocephalus. 
Okay, have a look at this case, please. Yeah, so uh, provided to me is the frontal chest radiograph of a skeletally mature patient, and I can see there is a, a pacemaker, a, a two lead pacemaker in C2. Uh, the shorter uh, lead is uh, uh, ending in the right atrium, while the longer lead is uh, extending beyond the margin of uh, right, left heart border. Uh, so most likely there is a possible uh, perforation, um, the myocardial perforation through the uh, lead of a pacemaker. Um, other than that, I can see uh, bilateral lung parenchyma shows uh, reticular opacities. Um, uh, I'll, I'll uh, uh, urgently inform the uh, cardiac team uh, regarding same and uh, also alert the referring physician. Okay, please have a look at yes, this case. Okay, provided to me is the frontal uh, chest radiograph of a skeletally mature patient with multiple ECG leads. And I can see there is uh, endotracheal tube in situ, which is uh, which uh, the tip of the tube is uh, extending uh, more uh, lower and it is towards the right uh, main bronchus. Uh, there is a complete opacification uh, of uh, left hemithorax uh, this might be secondary to the over-insertion of the endotracheal tube. Uh, I will urgently inform the referring physician and uh, the on-call uh, res uh, resident and uh, uh, ask them to uh, correct the position of the endotracheal tube so that uh, there can be aeration of the left lung as well. Okay, so that has been done. What would you like to do next? I'll do a repeat uh, chest x-ray to see whether the tube position is correct and there is any uh, opening of the left uh, left. So tube. this was a repeat chest radiograph that was performed. Okay, so provided to me is the uh, frontal chest radiograph of a skeletally mature patient and uh, I can appreciate there is uh, not able to make out the tip of uh, ET tube but it looks like uh, proximal uh, yeah, it looks like uh, quite proximal to the carina now uh, and uh, i can see there is a subclavian uh, line also on the right side uh, with tip in uh, proximal svc uh, otherwise uh, there is some uh, okay so loss of what about the left lung yeah, there is some loss of volume in the left lung in comparison to the right lung, but there is uh, uh, aeration seen. Uh, uh, so there is. Uh, is this an improvement from the previous radiograph that we discussed? Yeah, there is improvement. Okay, so mm -hmm. I'll show you the next case. Here is your next case. You can scroll. Yeah, this patient so this presented to us with headache, fever, and altered consciousness. Okay, so provided to me is the MRI brain of the uh, patient, uh, adult patient. I can see, I'll just go through the sequence. Okay, so I can see there is a uh, uh, wedge-shaped uh, or a linear area of uh, T2 hyperintensity seen along the medial aspect of bilateral frontal lobes and... Uh, there is uh, some area of uh, uh, T2 hyperintensity also seen in the insular cortex on the left side uh, with uh, hyperintensity also in the inferior portion of the uh, left basal ganglia region. Uh, so in, uh, in, the, in the given uh, imaging, uh, my uh, provisional uh, diagnosis will be uh, acute infarct. I would like to confirm the findings on a diffusion weighted sequence. Here is a diffusion. So, so weighted the sequence. diffusion weighted sequence shows there is uh, some uh, diffusion restriction seen in the involved area, uh, predominantly involving the gyral uh, surface. Uh, the area, uh, this uh, this looks like uh, acute infarct. I would like to uh, see the uh, MRA, MR angiogram to uh, confirm the uh, origin of the, uh, the vessel uh, involvement of the uh, infarct. Okay, just before 
that I will show you the flare sequence. I think you haven't seen the flare sequence. Is that correct? So have a yeah. look at this, please. So and the flare sequence. What was the history? Could you please repeat it for me? The history of this patient. Uh, there was headache and uh, uh, fever and uh, one more thing, delirium or something like that. I. Uh, it was I'm altered not, consciousness. Altered consciousness. Sorry. Yeah. So uh, okay, so there is uh, um, hyper intensity and fullness also seen in the uh, uh, left temporal lobe uh, anterior medial aspect. Uh, what about so, the basal ganglia? Yeah, basal ganglia. There is uh, um, there is some uh, hyper intensity and fullness in, along the inferior aspect of the left basal ganglia region. Okay. What about the putamen and the caudate? On the left side? Left side. Okay, so I accept your differential as being an infarct. Uh, other than that, any other possibilities that you yeah, can so think uh, of in this uh, particular case with the history of fever? Correct. Right, so, uh, um, another possibility will be uh, encephalitis. Um, okay. uh, predominantly viral encephal encephalitis uh, uh, because of the involvement of the temporal lobe and medial aspect. Uh, I'm suspecting herpes simplex virus uh, uh, infection. Okay, have a look at this case. This is the last case for you. You have 30 seconds left. You can take a minute. Yeah, I've been provided with a lateral chest radiograph uh, with uh, of barium uh, study, barium solo study. And I can see there is outpouching along the posterior aspect of proximal uh, uh, esophagus or pharynx. I should say pharynx. Uh, there is uh, barium filling in the uh, outpouching, and there is continuation of the barium in the rest of the esophagus. Uh, uh, so this is uh, uh, Zenker's diverticulum. Uh, this is in the posterior lateral aspect of the pos uh, posterior lateral aspect of the pharynx or uh, pharyngoesophageal junction. Uh, I'll inform the referring physician for the same and. Uh, try to uh, extract the history. Uh, if there is history of uh, foul smell in breath, uh, can suggest uh, retention of food material in the diverticulum. So what would you like to do regarding this other than just informing the referring clinician? Uh, Where would you like to refer this patient? This will uh, most probably go to ENT clinic. Okay, so we complete your cases. I agree with it. You could have said ENT surgeon. That's also fine. So this is a barium swallow, the lateral image of which shows a pharyngeal diverticulum. The barium fills the diverticulum, but it is also seen to be passing distally in the normal esophagus. So this is a Zenker's diverticulum, and this has to be operated. You'll send it to the ENT clinic uh, and or the surgical team. So, well done. This was a case of herpes simplex encephalitis. Your differentials were good. So, the differentials are usually middle cerebral artery infarct, herpes simplex encephalitis, and then other viral encephalitis. According to Radiopedia and according to, to the books, they say that in herpes simplex encephalitis, the basal ganglia is typically spared, while as in middle cerebral artery infarct, it will mostly be involved. But then I agree sometimes it might not be if there's only an insular infarct. So the differentials were good, but then with the history of fever, the primary diagnosis should become encephalitis, either viral encephalitis or herpes simplex in encephalitis rather than the middle cerebral artery infarct. Sure. So well done. Uh, this case, this was a simple straightforward case, malpositioned endotracheal tube. You dealt with it well. Again, this was dealt well. So this has perforated through the heart wall and this needs urgent intervention. So in uh, such type of cases, use the word immediately urgent so these are the words that are they are looking for. Suppose if you just say you refer it to the clinician or you inform it to the clinician, they might just change the case and then you might have flunked in this case. You might have 
got in a 5 or even a 5.5 so don't make that mistake use the word urgently wherever needed and wherever it's not needed don't use the word urgently then coming back to this case this case is definitely a case of miss me syndrome that is neurofibromatosis 2 just a word of caution i would like to tell you to avoid using any abbreviations so this will be told to you in any viva course that you attend in any of the books that you read so whatever abbreviations or short forms we are using in our particular practice might not be the same as the britishers use as they are being used in nhs so avoid cp angle masses it's better to use cerebellar point angle masses though it's i agree cp angle masses is very commonly used but just a word of caution avoid doing that sure. similar sure. with nf2 give the whole word the entire word that is neurofibromatosis 2 rather than just nf2 avoid abbreviations of any kind anywhere so if you remember abbreviations were not allowed in frc anatomy yes. so the same thing applies in all the frcr exams just to avoid that sometimes they might give you short forms such as ane which effectively means accident em emergency department but if they do it that's fine you try not to do it Okay. Then another thing that you did was not look at other sequences, though I agree this is very characteristic and you will be tempted to complete the case with this particular sequence only, but it is not a good thing to do. Sometimes what will happen, it might be a neurofibromatosis 2 case with something else. Mm -hmm. So if you don't see the rest of the sequences, then you might lose marks. Suppose if they just have the flare sequence, which is less likely, or mm -hmm. suppose if they only want to show you the flare sequence and want the diagnosis from that alone, then they'll just tell you that, okay, that's good. Then we'll go to the next case. They might not say good, but they'll just finish it. And then they might go to the next case rather than showing you the post contrast or rest of the sequences. They'll, they'll be satisfied if you just say that, but okay. not actually asking for it is not a good thing to do in the why or okay. This case again straightforward, Su such cases will be given to you first up just to warm you up. So mm -hmm. during the viva, most of us will be having nerves and most of us will be very nervous. So just to calm our senses down, they sometimes show very s simple cases, but also be ready to have a very complicated case first up. So that is also possible. I have shown a very complicated case first up so i have shown a operated case i won't say wh what case as it is not allowed but be ready for everything overall well done you're confident and clear you're in the right direction another word of caution is to ask for permission before using the mouse so the rc examiners are very particular about it if they tell you okay go ahead and look at the case then you can ask them for permission or you can just tell them may i, may I take the mouse so they'll, they'll give you the control so okay. other than that you're doing well so i'll give you seven out of eight there's always room for improvement thank so well done candidate one and now we'll move on to candidate two thank you very much thank you good day to you and candidate two i'll just try to find you and unmute you yes candidate two are you here with us yes sir yes so you can call me dr sandeep i uh, I might be senior to some of you and might be junior to some of you. So it's I better not to use sir. You can call me Sandeep or Dr. Sandeep. Either one is fine. So I'll again give you 12 minutes and I'll show you some cases. And your time starts now. You're good uh, to go. Okay. I've been provided with a frontal chest radiograph of a skeletally mature patient. And uh, looking at the lung fields initially, uh, lung fields appear relatively clear. Uh, there's no pleural effusions. I uh, I noticed that there is a uh, bulky lesion noted overlying the left hilum, and uh, the hilum uh, hyla vessels are seen through it. Uh, I am trying to look for the positioning of this lesion, whether it is in the anterior or the posterior aspect. Uh, however, uh, my differentials on this level, with no other involvement of the uh, bones, as much as I can see. Uh, I'm thinking of a lymph nodal mass, maybe in the hilum, or it could even be uh, an, uh, an, uh, any other metastatic or neoplastic lesion. Ideally, in this such a case, I would uh, refer it uh, back to the clinician and get, gauge whether if there's any history of uh, fever 
or uh, any uh, history of hemoptysis in this pa- in this case in which further which uh, i would like to do a ct scan if the symptoms are severe okay there is no symptoms of fever so in which compartment would you like to place this particular mass within anterior uh, medial anterior middle or the posterior mediastinum so i would place it more in the anterior mediastinum okay, because why not in the posterior mediastinum uh of the aortic arch uh, if uh, can i can you see my can i show you sir i will give you the control so you can click once yeah go ahead okay sir yeah so this is the uh, aortic arch you and you have to click once uh, yeah now now we can see you okay mouse, yeah. this is the uh, aortic arch the boundary of it the mass uh, the lesion is placed over here and s- even if it is continuing through the posterior mediastinum some obscuration of the aorta should be there so i'm thinking it is more likely in the anterior mediastinum okay However, so how would you like to confirm this uh this uh, could be confirmed further with a, a ct scan of the chest however uh, apart from that uh, for such a centrally placed lesion uh, no other imaging could really help what about a lateral chest radiograph oh sorry sir of course uh, if there is another orthogonal view present i would definitely look at that okay so i've been provided with a lateral chest radiograph and i noticed that the initially seen lesion is somehow uh, occupying the anterior aspect and uh, causing opacification of the retrosternal space and uh, the hilar vessels are visualized so such a mass lesion in the anterior aspect uh, my differentials would be uh, a thymoma a lymphoma or uh, even a germ cell tumor but uh, since the patient is skeletally mature i'm thinking more of uh, uh thymoma or lymphoma and further i would refer it back to the clinician okay so just before going back i'll just show you i think i've closed the ct scan just allow me a moment and i'll show you the ct scan so here is the ct scan that you initially wanted i'll just scroll to the top and now you can s- start scrolling you're good to go yeah I've been provided with the axial post contrast CT uh, in the mediastinal window. Uh, I would like to scroll through the stack of images before I make my comments. Okay, so I see a, a hypodense uh, soft tissue lesion in the anterior uh, uh, mediastinum, uh, which is. Uh, lobulated in appearance with few hyperdense areas and few cystic areas within uh, on post contrast images uh, there is homogeneous enhancement overall with few areas that are showing non enhancement so uh, also the uh, lymph nodes in the mediastinum uh, are not uh, enlarged uh, the fat planes with the uh, mediastinal vascular structures appear to be maintained uh, ideally in my routine practice i would also look for the lung window and see if there are any deposits in the lung and further this looks like a case of uh, uh, th- this still could be uh, thymoma uh, as i'm keeping it as my top differential uh, the second would be a lymphoma however i would like to do an entire scan of the abdomen and pelvis also and further refer it back with a ct guided biopsy would help okay so the diagnosis was thymoma what yes, would you do after the confirmation of the diagnosis uh after the confirmation of the diagnosis i would uh, refer it back to the clinician and a ct uh, guided biopsy would help in this case and the mdt can take over for okay. further man so here is your next case Oops. let I've me know if you want to zoom the image uh Oh no sir I'm good. Okay. Uh I've been provided with a radiograph of uh, bilateral feet and uh, I am able to appreciate that, that there's diffuse uh, uh, osteoporosis involving both the feet and there are multiple erosions noted in both the feet involving the uh, metacarpal heads uh, as well as distal uh, interphalangeal joints. There are also a large soft tissue deposits noted adjacent to these erosions. uh mainly i can visualize them at the first and the fifth uh metacarpophalangeal joints bilaterally such an appearance is uh, very typical of uh, erosive arthropathy with soft tissue deposits i'm thinking of gouty arthritis 
uh, further, I would, uh, uh, with the uh, preserved joint spaces, I'm uh, still thinking of gouty arthritis. I would like to see the orthogonal views as well, if there are any more um, more involvement of the feet. And I would uh, talk to the referring clinician about my findings. Okay, regarding the erosions that you talked about, could you describe in an elaborate manner? Okay, Where so are the erosions? Are they involving the joints? What kind of erosions are there? Okay, you can so use the mouse if you want to. All right. So the erosions like this one, I can see they're very punched out, uh, excavating the bone along the joint space and with overhanging edges, very typical of gouty arthritis because of soft tissue deposits outside in the soft tissues, which cause these erosions. And uh, the joint space appears to be preserved even after such uh, uh, erosive changes, which is again very characteristic of gouty arthritis. So uh, ideally in this case, I would talk to the clinician if... Uh, uh, the patient has the, any symptoms of uh, other soft tissue deposits or pain in other joints, which can be very much possible in this case. Okay. Other than that, anything else would you like to do other than informing the clinician? Uh, any blood tests you would like to have in this patient? Uh, uh, clinical parameters where uric acid levels can be checked and that will be provide useful for this patient. Okay, what about the treatment? I'm not so sure, sir. No. So does this require surgery or any kind of medication would suffice? Uh, medical management would suffice. Sir. Do you know what kind of medications are used? In no, gout? sir. I would have answered before if I would have. Known. Okay, no. the patient is having pain. So what would you like to give for that? NSAIDs would be useful for that, sir. Okay. So, we'll have a look at the next case. Okay. I've been provided with a frontal chest radiograph of a skeletally mature patient. Uh, I'm looking at the lung field and I can see there are multiple uh, opaque densities uh, of variable sizes noted in bilateral lung fields involving upper, mid and lower zones. Uh, these appear to be like uh, cannonball metastasis. I'm also trying to look for the bony involvement if there is any. Um, looking at the ribs bilaterally, I'm not able to appreciate any obvious destructive lesion in the ribs. So, scan and ball metastasis are, uh, is the likely diagnosis in this case and a primary needs to be detected, which most commonly can occur which, with no breast shadows. I'm thinking of testicular carcinoma and prostatic carcinoma, which needs to be checked. So, what investigation would you like to do next? Uh... I would like to do a full CT chest, abdomen and pelvis in this case. Yeah, I'll just scroll to the top. So we've imaged both the chest and the abdomen. You can okay. click once and start scrolling. I've been provided with the CT post contrast images of the chest. I can, the previously mentioned uh, lesions I can visualize in the lungs as well as in the mediastinum with marked thickening and involvement of even the cardiac regions. I would like to scroll through the entire stack and see if there are any other lesions and involvement in the abdomen. So the right kidney is not visualized and there is a large soft tissue density, which is heterogeneous appearance that is covering that, which is uh, occupying the right renal space. Okay. So this appears to be a, a renal cell uh, carcinoma that has caused, this appears to be like a renal cell carcinoma that has caused the uh, metastatic change. So in this case, I would uh, uh, refer it back to the MDT for further staging and management, sir. Okay. So other than the lung lesions as well as the right renal lesion. You scroll to the bottom of the scan. Did you find mm -hmm. any other thing? So there was even a uh, swass muscle involvement on the right side and there were even peritoneal deposits. Okay. What about the vessels? Would you be concerned about any vessel in a case of renal cell carcinoma? Yes, sir. The, there ones? could be thrombosis as well as uh, it, it could even extend into the IVC. So, uh, ideally, whether it's a tumor thrombus or a so black thrombus. So, what about thrombus. this case? So, there is involvement of the vessels. 
Very there special. are involvement of the renal vein as well uh, as well as one minute. I will just look at the IVC ones. There is even uh, some heterogeneous opacification in the IVC noted, sir. So I, I feel that there is vascular invasion into the renal vein as well as the IVC, which is probably causing the uh, metastatic deposits even in the peri uh, cardiac region. Okay. So, what would you like to do about this case next? Uh, I would like to refer it back to the MDT. Uh, since it is a metastasizing uh, lesion, uh, palliative treatment along with uh, uh, vascular uh, interventionist also should be involved in this case to manage it accordingly, sir, for stopping the further spread. Okay, so have a look at this case, please. Okay, sir. So I've been provided with the frontal radiograph of the chest. There is a well-defined uh, obesity noted in the retrocardiac region. I am trying to see uh, if uh, it is silhouetting the right, uh, le sorry, left uh, hemidiaphragm on the medial aspect, uh, except for the medial most aspect of the left hemidiaphragm, there is a complete visualization of the diaphragm. So retrocardiac opacity uh, could be a consolidative mass. I would, uh, uh, or a neoplastic uh, cause, I would like to uh, see if the patient had fever in which I would be thinking more in the line of consolidation. However, if the patient had chronic history and not acute, I would be doing a CT scan in this patient for further characterizations. Okay, so this patient has an acute and chronic history. The patient keeps on having recurrent chest infections. Uh, I'll show you the CT scan and you can start scrolling now. This is your last case and then we'll go to the third candidate for today. Okay, sir. I've been provided with the axial uh, CT of the chest in the mediastinal window non contrast images i am likely i would like to scroll through the stack before i make my diagnosis there is a soft tissue attenuation lesion noted in the left lower lobe involving the posterior segment uh, the lesion is appearing lobulated with some peripheral calcifications there is a tortuous vessel uh, noted uh, draining into the lesion from the uh, descending aorta uh, and this is uh, likely suggestive of a uh, sequestrum and uh, I, I would uh, in, uh, also look for the reformated images and contrast images in my routine practice to confirm the diagnosis and uh, refer and give my findings to the clinician and, pro and okay, this could I'll, be. Uh, leave the mouse. I'll show you the post contrast images but before that is it sequestrum or something else? Where do you find a sequestrum? A sequestrum is uh, found when there is a. Uh, um, is it sequestrum or s is is it a different term? Okay, it's, it's called a sequestration. Uh, sequestration. You can, yeah, you can go through the post contrast images. Being provided with the axial CT chest post contrast in the mediastinal window, and I can visualize that there is a draining uh, vessel from the arch of aorta supplying the is soft it from tissue. the arch of aorta oh sorry descending aorta sir i'm okay. so sorry from the descending aorta supplying the uh, soft tissue lesion and uh, this confirms the finding of uh, sequestration pulmonary sequestration in this case and i would uh, refer it back to the clinician uh, a surgical treatment would uh, be the right choice in this case so that the recurrent infections can be stopped okay so what kind of pulmonary sequestration is this case? So this is a, a there are two types intralobar and extralobar the, they both depend on the fact that whether there is a, a parietal covering or not that cannot be uh, commented on imaging sir. However uh, based on the drainage we can comment on the sequestration whether it is intralobar or extralobar okay. and this is a extralobar sequestration okay so yeah. what is the commonest sequestration in adult patients this is an adult patient um i'm not sure sir. so it's intralobar sequestration in adult patients and okay sir. if we complete your cases uh 
Regarding interlobar and extralobar sequestration, I'll share the differences in the group later on, as to save time. Among these two, between these two, intra and extralobar, which of these two is more commonly associated with uh, congenital pulmonary airway malformation and congenital heart diseases? Is it intralobar or extralobar? One that occurs in childhood, I think, then it extra lower. So. Yeah, so extra has extra things, just remember it. Yeah. That. So, this is a case of sequestration. Uh, it's called pulmonary sequestration or accessory lung. Uh, as far as I remember, the sequestrum word is only used in osteomyelitis bone cases. I'm not sure if it is used in the, these particular cases. Just go through literature if. It can be used here or not, but then pulmonary sequestration is the terminology that is better to be used. This case, okay, again, this is a case of renal cell carcinoma, multiple lung metastasis, their pericardial metastasis as well. So in all cases of renal cell carcinoma, even while you're reporting, there is a on radiopedia, there's a checklist. Either I think it's on radiopedia or radiographics. I don't remember. I'll just find it and I'll share it on the group for reporting purposes also there's a checklist regarding what all things have to be mentioned in a case of renal cell carcinoma so you always have to mention whether there is invasion in the renal vein ipsilateral side contralateral side whether there is in infiltration invasion in the inferior vena cava and if it is there for how much distance it is extending to so these are things you have to mention in your report then you have to also see the bone windows in these particular cases to look for any bone metastasis. In this particular case, there are multiple soft tissue metastasis as well. I think in the right iliacus muscle, yes, there is an enhancing mass over here. In the quadratus lumborum muscle on the left side, there's another enhancing. There might be more also. So, yes, candidate two, I will just unmute you. So, allow me a moment. Yeah, so yes. can you too? Yeah, you unmuted. So these are things the checklist has to be there while reporting in your daily cases as well as for viva purposes. And always make it a point to scroll to through the entirety of the scan and also look at the bone windows in these particular cases. Okay. After that, this case, okay, this is a classic case of gouty arthritis. In such cases, especially in the case of classic ar gouty arthritis, Make sure you have the description ready in your mind and you give the proper description like uh, well-defined, uh, punched out, juxta-articular uh, erosions with overhanging edges or margins and the joint space is preserved and then you describe the soft tissue masses involving those areas as tophi. So these has have to be done. You have to look at the uric acid levels also. and though they might not ask you regarding the specific treatment it is always better to just have a basic idea of the treatment when you're preparing for these exams so gout has to be managed by non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and then sometimes they give prednisolone they also sometimes give xanthine oxidase inhibitors if you remember your pharmacology days from mbbs they used to be drugs like allopurinol and febuxostat so yes, along with that some uro uricosuric drugs many other drugs are there so even if you know one or two just to save that case if they ask you just to uh, answer something it has to be there rather than just saying that you don't know anything about it all right okay yes. and this was a case of thymoma well tackled before in such cases before asking for the ct scan it is always better to ask for the lateral radiograph. Most of the times in UK, they do lateral radiographs. I understand in India and some of our countries, we do not do as many lateral radiographs as we ought to, but then this is commonly done in the UK. Other than that, well done. So you are confident, clear, everything is good regarding this particular case and all such mass cases. Remember to describe the margins of the lesion first. You can do it any 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 sequence, but then the things that you have to describe are the margins, the density, whether there are any differential densities. By that I mean whether there is any necrosis within, any calcifications within. If there are not any, you can say there's no 
necrosis, no calcifications, no fatty attenuation within. So these are things you have to s say in such masses. And yes, you have sir. to also speak about invasion or infiltration into adjacent structures, whether the fat planes are maintained or not, especially in media standard masses. Yes. Sir. Also, whether the adjacent bones show any erosions or not. So these are things that you have to keep in mind and make it a habit. I'm sure you would be doing this in all the reports that you're doing on a re regular basis, on a daily basis, but you have to follow this in the exam as well. Again, do not use short forms. I don't think if you use or not, uh, but just as a matter of caution. So thank you so much, Weldon. I'll also give you a seven out of eight. You're doing well. You're confident. Keep it up. Well done. So candidate three, would you like to ask something, candidate two? I'm sure, so sorry, I'm in a hurry today. But I, I hope you are satisfied with your cases. Yeah, candidate two. I am so sorry. I am a, in a bit of a hurry today, but I am. I hope you are, you were satisfied with the discussion today, candidate two. Absolutely, absolutely, sir. Okay, thank you so much. Do you have any questions? Thank you so much. No, sir. I will improve. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, candidate three. Are you here with us? Yeah. So, candidate Hello? three, if yeah. Can you hear me? This? Yeah. yeah. Just a moment, please. So, just allow me a moment to sort out some of the cases and I will show you your case. So, I will not set any timer for you, candidate three. Okay. Okay. But you can start with this particular case. So this case presented to us with headache. I will just give you the control. See if you can accept it and start scrolling. Can you scroll? Right, so. Yeah, I'm scrolling, yeah. So presented, this patient is an adult patient presented to us with recurrent headaches. Okay, so this is a CT. Uh, non-contrast axial sections of the brain. Scrolling through the images, I can see that uh, there is preserved gray-white matter differentiation. Uh, there is no uh, intracranial mass or mass effect. There is no midline shift. At the level of the uh, brain stem, uh, there is some uh, crowding. Uh, at the level of the brainstem, which is uh, suspicious for herniation of the cerebellar tonsil. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from that, there is no acute intracerebral uh, hemorrhage, no intra or extra axial collections. I would want to see uh, sagittal sections to further confirm my findings. You have the control. So the sagittal or uh, non-contrast sections, uh, oh, it's running. It's going on its own, actually. No, there might yeah. be some lag. This is a possibility in the actual exam as well. Yeah. So when you face this, you can just tell the examiner that there seems to be some lag. Please bear with me. And then you can take some extra time as well. Okay. So the sagittal section is confirming uh, my suspicion that there is herniation of the cerebellar tonsil below the level of foramen magnum, suggestive of a Chiari-1 uh, malformation. Um, the corpus callosum appears normal. In my usual practice, I would want to see even the bone window to rule out any other anomalies associated with Chiari-1 malformation, uh, like, um, like a, a scoliosis or fusion of the cervical vertebrae. Uh, but in this... Uh, uh, limited projection. Uh, I can only appreciate the uh, herniation of the cerebellar tonsil. So I would convey my findings to the referring physician and refer the patient to the neurology team for uh, further management. Okay. This patient presented to us in the accident and emergency department with head injury. Okay. So I am uh, scrolling through a uh, non-contrast um, axial sections of the CT of the brain. Um, I can see that uh, there is some um, subgallial hematoma in the left uh, frontal region. 
uh, as well as in the left uh, parietal lobe, but um, there are no underlying uh, subdural uh, collections. Um, there is, can I scroll through the whole thing and then comment? Okay. Uh, there are there is no intra uh, parenchymal bleed, no midline shift, and uh, I would want to see the bone window to rule out any underlying fractures for the same patient. Okay, there were no underlying fractures in this patient. Uh, so if there are no underlying fractures, I think there is just uh, subgallial hematomas. Okay, no, no, there is some subtle hyperdensity which I can see in the high frontal region on the left side. Where suspicious could you point it for, out to us with your... Yeah, here, this one. Yeah. So this is suspicious for a um, uh, contusion or a diffuse axonal injury. Um, so I would raise the suspicion uh, to the referring physician and I think an MRI would be more beneficial for Before this patient. Before going to an MRI, would you like to do something with this case? Any other views? Uh, yeah, a coronal or a, I think a, a coronal section would be better. Here is the okay. coronal that you were looking for. You can scroll. So, in the coronal... Yeah, keep scrolling, yeah, keep, keep scrolling. You haven't reached that region yet. Keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Yes, now stay there. Yeah, so there is this... Oh, it stopped on its own, sorry. Yo, just yeah, just stop so there. there. I will scroll for yes. you here. Okay, yeah. So there is a subcortical or uh, ill defined area of hyperdensity, uh, suspicious for a cerebral contusion. Okay. Uh, it could also be an acute uh, bleed. So um, I would uh, want to do a CT uh, with contrast. So, what's the difference between any... contusion and acute bleed? Is there any difference? Or can these two entities overlap? I'm not sure. If there's an acute bleed, I think we need to do some intervention. But for contusions, they're just managed uh, conservatively. Okay. So, so have a look out on the right side. What is this? Uh, are you pointing at something? I can't yes, see I'm your I'm pointing arrow. at something. This. Can you see my cursor mm -hmm. now? What no. is this? Yeah, now I can see. Or uh, what is this? That's a normal structure. What is that? That's just the gyrus. Is, so is it called the gyrus or the sulcus? This the sulcus, sorry. It's the sulcus, yeah. So what has happened to the sulcus here? So there is hyperdensity within it. So, so that then is what does it become? Uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage. Okay, yeah. good. So we'll stop here. So okay. this is a case of subarachnoid hemorrhage just to make you understand the importance of looking at the entire scan and looking at yeah. the extreme set of images, the top and the bottom most images. So sometimes the entire scan might be normal and then at the bottom of the image, at the last section, you might see something. So this was a case I got on the 11th. So pretty straightforward case, not a difficult case. But then sometimes what happens, I was reporting a uh, trauma case and then there was a mass in the mandibular condyle. Mm -hmm. Okay. So regarding bleed and contusions, the hemorrhage is a common entity, common term under which you can list contusions, extradural hematoma and subarachnoid hemorrhage, all those things. So bleed will not be a good term to use in the vivas or in the cases it's better to use the proper terminology that is contusion subdural hematoma subarachnoid and then extradural so these are the terms that you have to say rather than using okay. the word bleed and then that well done in this case this case uh, i think you should have asked for the post contrast i'll show you the post contrast so this again i reported on the 12th i think two days ago and then Something which you did was very good. You did understand that there was crowding in the foreign magnum. So that is yeah. something which caught my eye as well. And then retrospectively, I saw something else later on after looking at the contrast images. So I'll just show you the contrast. You can scroll if you want. Mm, there is a 
right cerebral or yeah, hemisphere so there's mass there's something in the right cerebral mm. it is very subtle and it's enhancing homogeneously but not much enhancement is seen but there is a mass which is causing mass effect and that is actually the cause of the crowding in the foramen magnum but it is just effacing the fourth ventricle and there is no hydrocephalus as of now but then it can develop later on so there is a mass which was there so before coming on to a diagnosis of chiari one malformation make sure you ask mm -hmm. for the post contrast for sometimes this might happen so this was you know this was a proper real life case that i recently reported okay. so other than that well done so Thank for you. the september candidates i'll start showing more complicated cases later on once uh, you you get a hang of it but from what i understand from your particular viva today is that you're doing well and we'll okay. probably meet Thank next you. sunday next yeah. sunday i have actually planned a session with dr mitesh dr mitesh wants to do a 15 or 20 minute session before this viva session regarding the approach or to fcr rabbits with respect to shoulder and elbow joint so he'll cover these two joints with respect to rapids we'll start on the, at 10:30 next sunday and then after his session we'll continue with the viva and i already have some people in the waitlist for the next sunday session as well and then after that as well but if even if you're interested in being on the waitlist and you haven't sent me your 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 interest message as of now please do so on telegram so thank you so much i hope the cases were good and informative if any questions are there we can further discuss in the telegram group either on the essentials group or the june or the september group so thank you so much and we'll meet next sunday take care and good night